Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Father. Just want to remind you about our St. Louis Labor Food Food Pantry every week that feeds the families of the Sharon Parish St. Louis Sacred Heart. We're not as fortunate as we are. They don't share maternal blessings. And so please be generous. He's been supporting that. It's one of the great corporate works of mercy to feed the hungry, clothe the poor. Now, in a hand we're going to take it eventually. Jim and Joy Glasgow have had 50 years of marriage. They need the applause for a song, so that's probably good for something in the world. <laughs> anyway, we congratulate on this blessed day. All their children are here. And so may it be a blessed day. I pity the priest that said it wouldn't last. <laughs> so let's take a moment and place ourselves in God's presence as we ask God to be with us, nourish us with his living word, and gather us at the Eucharist that brings us his strength, his divine food, his nourishment, and his love for us. Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. zero to 206 seconds. And sure enough, in the morning there was a beautifully wrapped package with a bow and she was intrigued and perplexed. She ran outside, she grabbed the package and she opened it up and there was a beautiful shiny new bathroom scale. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne, I hope you get something better after 50 years. I recently met a woman where I shopped and 
whose father I buried a few months ago. The conversation that I had with her left me perplexed. She told me that she wasn't doing well since her dad had died. So she decided to do something for herself. She went out and she bought herself a new shiny jeep. She said that her daddy would have wanted her to have it. She always called him her daddy. But she said to me, it turns out that even after all that, she can't understand why she still doesn't feel any better over losing Jim. I walked away from that conversation just completely bewildered. Can things ever heal us? Can things ever nourish us? Can they ever take the place of our loved ones in our hearts? Is that what's meant to have life in abundance in God? Certainly not. It's not the life that Jesus embraces us to. Life in God is built on the treasure of things that aren't material or money, the treasure of family, and children and grandchildren and events and memories, and all the great ways that God intervenes in our lives. So many of Jesus, they rejected him. You know, it's hard to challenge authority and the status quo, the customary way of doing things and thinking. Just ask Pope Francis. I was reading an article in American Magazine this week that talked about how the critics of Pope Francis are dividing the church and families. They're so critical. So many today reject the message of Jesus as well, not just in former times. Of the 51 practicing Catholics in 2014, Today, there's only about 39 million, an 11% decrease. Of all the baptisms that take place in the church, over one out of every three baptized born to Catholics children will, will, will never be baptized. In our present day culture, clearly the invitation to this life in Jesus, this life of abundance, is fully on deaf ears. Modern society relies less on God and more on self-sufficiency. But my friends, there's a silver lining in every cloud. Just as this pandemic has highlighted our blessings and our good fortune and our tremendous gifts that we should be grateful for every day. So the present relationship of our church to culture emphasizes to every one of us how much the church needs you and me to evangelize our sisters and brothers, to share the good news, to witness by our lives of goodness and faithfulness and service how much we're loved by God and to share that love with our sisters and brothers. The image of the banquet in the stories today paints the picture of life in abundance. And that symbol of a feast would be something that would be really welcome in Jesus' time when there was tremendous poverty and tremendous food shortages. Who doesn't love a party? I know we all do. And especially during this pandemic, when we've had enough of being cooped up so long in this present moment. But the invited in the story reject the invitation of the king, the symbol of our gracious God's invitation. They offer all kinds of excuses, back then and even today. Different centuries, but the same excuses, because their priorities are not God's ways. All reject and miss the opportunity of a lifetime. So what does Jesus do? One of the great central themes of his message is who takes their place in his kingdom? The poor, the vulnerable. They're the ones who, who share and find the ultimate life in him. The great message of Jesus is that God's life is open to all who respond to the invitation, the just and the righteous, as well as the rest of us, human, weak, and sinful at times, but good-hearted well intentions. Guess that the feast is a euphemism for life in God's kingdom. We've all been brought into that kingdom by virtue of being members of the church. The symbol of the wedding garments is the outward sign of the inner, inner, inward conversion, the transformation that's required of all who seek to really know and love Jesus. We can't remain the same. We must be transformed by God's grace and His goodness at work in our lives so that at the end of our life's journey, we're different persons, transform more closely resembling Christ himself in our goodness and our love and our virtue. It's not enough to accept or agree with the gospel. It's not enough really to simply hear the stories. We must live them out, strive for the transformation and the reality of that message. 
My friends, in the face of divine love, God's grace is at work in us so that we leave behind our old self and become new persons in the eyes of God. We can all do it. We're called never to remain the same or standard, but to be new persons by the grace of God to work in us today and every day in our gracious God's invitation to life forever in Him and the joy of God's kingdom. Deepen our 
faith community's devotion for the gift of the Eucharist. Teach us your grace, O Lord. Pour out your blessings upon our sick and burdened. Teach us your grace, O Lord. Open our hearts in greater love and care for the marginalized among us. Teach us your grace, O Lord. Welcome our faithfully departed to their eternal reward in your light, remembering Domenica Geraci, Sylvia Janik, and this day's intentions, the Glaska and Mikowski families, Tina and Brogno, Matthew Machinsky, the intentions of Tim Arnold, the intentions of Jim and Joanne Glaska on their 50th wedding anniversary, the intentions of Lenore Marino, and for the protection of life and religious freedom. Teach us to the grace of the Lord. Lord of the feast, grant us life's grace through your son's mercy and service as we make our way to the full banquet of Christ forever and ever. Thank you.
the time he was betrayed, he began to willingly to his passion. Jesus took the bread. Giving thanks, he broke this bread and he shared it with his disciples. And he said, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up.
Remember that for community, we start from the back, we alternate rows so that we can be safely distanced. We walk down the center along the blue crosses. Thank you for honoring those things that keeps everyone safe.
stand and continue our prayer.